It is time for another budget multi-tool video. And now I have finally found the Flash MT for less than $50. So we're gonna talk about all five of these tools and kind of do a brief overview of them. Many are just versions of tools that I've talked about in the past. And so this should give further clarification. And we're also gonna talk about some value prospects, which ones are good purchases and which ones you might wanna avoid. Now we're gonna start talking about the Flash MT. Now I did a review of this multi-tool probably more than a year ago, uh, and it wasn't terrible by any stretch. I did, however, end up with the wrong color when I purchased it, I sent it back to Knife Center where I got it, and I was planning on getting a different color and never did. And so when I found these on AliExpress under 50 bucks, I wanted to do two things. One, I wanted to check if it actually was a Flash MT or some weird clone or counterfeit. And uh, I also wanted to potentially get one in my collection because it's a size reference that I think is very valid in today's market. It's, it's a size, size of multi-tool that not a lot of people have and a lot of people want. And so I think it's worth having at least for a reference. So I took it out already to inspect it and I will tell you this is actually a Flash MT. When I unbox the other one, it is the exact same packaging. It is the exact same multi-tool. I looked at pretty much everything. That what, what you're seeing here, what you're seeing here is that uh, SOG makes their multi-tools in China, right? They make their multi-tools in China. And there are a bunch of them that don't like make it to the American market, right? They, they just kind of sit there in their packaging. So like the power pints and the power leaders and all of that, you see them on places like AliExpress for very low prices, much, much lower than what you can get in America. And what I'm saying here is that they are, generally speaking, legit. Now, I don't talk a lot about AliExpress because the problem with AliExpress is I can't really give you links. Those links, they tend to expire. Like a listing will go up, but when it goes out of stock, that listing then completely disappears and a new listing shows up. So it's inefficient for me to do so. You're just gonna have to do your own searches. I will stipulate this. If you are purchasing anything on AliExpress, make sure that you do it through a third party uh, purchasing agent. And what I mean is that you should use it PayPal, like put yourself a barrier between your credit card and AliExpress. I just feel that that's important because although some sellers are great, not all of them are. It is a bit of a minefield over there. So having PayPal and having the ability to get reimbursed and also not giving your credit card information directly is very, very important. So make sure that if you do purchase anything on AliExpress that you are using PayPal or something similar. Now, let me quickly talk about the Flash MT. This is a very light multi-tool. It's actually one of the things that had me interested in in the first place. So this is 4.7 ounces which is like that magic size of multi-tool that really doesn't exist right now. So only like the PowerPoint and then the Flash MT and a few others exist in this range. And I just think it's a very, very good size. Now there's a few things about this tool that, that makes it like not ideal for me personally. First of all, the gear ratio is not as good as the PowerPoint. I don't know why if they're, after all the feedback everyone gives them, that they insist on using this terrible gear ratio that requires you to open it like that far just to get it around a nut, right? Like they really need to learn from what they have successful on the PowerPoint and implement it. So that's the first thing that does annoy me quite a bit. The other thing about this tool that really annoys me and I, I, it's just my personal preference is I really dislike assisted knives. I assisted knives are what you do if you're incapable of making a decent action on a knife. That's the only reason it exists. It's not because, oh, well, I have no strength. No, no, if you have a good action and a good detent, any like good modern knife is going to be better and easier to open than an assisted knife if it's done correctly. Like that's pretty much the case across the board that of all these knives that I've tried. 
So I don't like the assisted thing, and I and I, I but I do like the locking aspect. I like the fact that it can keep the blade locked, and because when you're using everything else, you know that that's actually reasonable. I'm just not a huge fan of assisted knives in general, and there are, are even though they're technically legal in a lot of places. Good luck trying to convince your local municipality that it's not an automatic. You're going to have to fight that fight, and trust me, believe it or not, you don't want it. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it, and I wish they hadn't done the assistedness. Other than that, like, I don't, don't hate the knife. It's in D2, which is great. It's actually a really nice upgrade, and at $40 for what this is, that's actually amazing, right? Like, when I did this initial review, it was like 70 so I, the fact that I can get this for $40, well, that is really good, right? Like that's really good and worth the wait. And this is a nice size package. It's a one-handable blade. Yes, it is uh, tipped down, which is a little annoying, but you know what, whatever. Um, that's a decent little situation we got here. Now it also comes with a little uh, slip joint, bottle opener, flathead. I wish it had a slightly stronger detent. It's not very strong. And it's also a little bit thinner than it really needs to be. Like, look at how much space they have. They should have made this as thick as possible so it could be a potential prying tool as well. The other thing that they have here is on the back side of the arm is a spot for a double-sided four millimeter bit. So when you close that, you actually have a spot on the back of the pliers to hold onto this bit. Now here's the thing, this is not as secure as the power point is with a still full four, you know, quarter inch bit. Um, there's just uh, a little bit more play when you're holding it. You have to really be conscious to squeeze it while you're twisting. Otherwise, if it opens just a little bit, it can start to rotate. So it does work. And I'm really thankful that it has an inline driver that is a non-proprietary, meaning you can use any standard four millimeter bit. But uh, yeah, it's, it's there, um, it's, it's something. It's not my favorite design, but like I said, like this is basically $30 cheaper than uh, it was the first time I reviewed it. That is a completely different kind of context, right? Like that's, that's a completely different context for any multi-tool, that's, that's practically half the cost. So at $40, I mean, this is, this is a serious contender for a budget multi-tool that's actually very compact. Let me know what you guys think. Is this something you would consider now that you can find it at 40 versus the 70 that it originally cost? Now we're gonna go through this really quickly because I've already covered these in the past, but this is a clone of a Leatherman Wave made by a company called Fleesa. Now, these usually stay under the $30 price point. And now what I have coming up is a value guide on budget multi-tools. We're gonna go through the entire group of budget multi-tools under $50. We're gonna talk about who's at the very top. We're gonna reorganize our Amazon list to reflect which within those brands is best. And we're gonna take all of the clones of the similar type and we're gonna group them together in order of value and that way when you go to make a purchase you can just find the one that is the least expensive you're we're basically going to force the companies to keep the prices low by having all the information together so i needed a reference and so i had to re uh, buy the uh fleece multi-tool and um it's fine it's an okay tool it has the same tool set that we're used to from these so this has the mic small flathead in addition to everything else on this side with the new upgraded scissors, so I like all of that. This is actually, you know, these are actually pretty good value for $30. And then on the other side, we have the uh, bit driver. Now, I think this is the only variation of the Wave clone on Amazon in black that you can get for this price. So that is of note. That's why I ended up with the black version. They have, a, they have the all stainless as well. And keeping in mind that this is not like a DLC coating, it's more like a paint. So it will be somewhat effective, but it will deteriorate over time. But yeah, that's one example of a good budget multi-tool. Remember, all of these are made by the same OEM and they're just distributed by different people. And the next couple are good examples of that, but they come with some extra benefits. 
All right, so recently I ended up giving away to a friend the original Byberry tool that I had, and they had since upgraded it with replaceable cutters, so I wanted to get the upgraded version, so I had it for reference. This is currently, as far as I'm concerned, the best value in the Wave Clone style because they tend to be less than $30 with the sheath, which is actually quite good with the, um, a, the clip that just goes on. It has three replaceable bits that come with it as well. And it has a pocket clip. It has replaceable cutters on this one where the last one did not. And they actually have the ability to buy spare cutters. So that is really good. The other thing that I like about the Byberry versus some of the other clones is their quality control, their uh, customer service department, I should say, is very responsive. Most of the time with these companies, you get no response. But Byberry is consistently responding and taking care of its customers when there's issues with their tools on Amazon. That pushes them above the rest, in my opinion. Uh, just, just, and I think as long as they continue to do that, I will continue to recommend them. If that changes, you know, if you have a bad experience, please let me know down below. I want to keep track of that. But right now, mostly what I hear is positive things from Byberry, and so for that reason, they kind of get the the thumbs up from me. This one probably being the number one value in the Wave Clone style. Now, one thing I will say is that the tension. On the pliers, if you go a little bit further, it's just not as strong, but the action is fine right out of the box. And you know, you can always like push it open a little bit more if you needed to get around something very, very wide. It's just a little bit snug right there at the very end, but it will loosen up over time. You can see all you can already see stuff coming out of the pivot as I'm forcing it. And it's probably just because they put a little bit more grease than they needed to inside that pivot. So this tool has the bit driver on one side, it has the pocket clip, it has the micro driver in addition to the large flat, the can opener, bottle opener, and the um, scissors. I've already covered these so many times. It's got the saw, it's got the serrated blade, the diamond file, and the straight blade. Now the straight blade in all of these is marked clearly as a 7CR, which is actually a pretty decent steel in comparison to the 428C that you have on the Leatherman Wave. So actually, this is a relatively competitive one-to-one -one comparison. That's, that's very nice. Now, I don't know if the serrated blade is in 7CR as well. I don't think it is. But the straight blade is, and that's important to note. And at the price point, I got this, I think, for $25. $25 includes the bits, the multi-tool, and everything else. It's almost impossible to beat if it remains at that at that price point right it's basically as good as it gets under 30. however the next multi-tool we're going to talk about is numero uno the best sub 50 dollar multi-tool that exists in my opinion and this particular variety has an added bonus that's so good well i even leatherman can't compete i know that's a quite a quite a claim but there's a reason so for four years, this is going to be a better value than even a Leatherman. Let me explain. So I was able to purchase this, and here's some proof of the actual price, for $35, okay? It comes with a complete bit kit, pretty much. I mean, even security bits. You can get additional bits from Klein. It comes with a spare set of cutters, which is in here. I'll get that out of there. There we go. All right. So it comes with a spare set of cutters and screws and shims, all very useful. So you have the ability to make it into a soft wire cutter by removing this side, which is hard wire. Okay. Or you can just replace both if they break. I will tell you that these have held up very well for testing for basically anyone, including myself. It has no trouble with the hanger wire and anything else. So this is a surge clone okay quite a bit bigger than the one that we just talked about and uh i think it's probably the most competitive uh budget multi-tool in existence uh really because 
in addition to everything you're seeing here, a decent sheath that even comes with a set of saws. It has the T-shank holder with a diamond file in it. It has, this, you know, the 7CR blade. It has the outdoor outside accessible scissor. It has all those things, right? But what makes it almost unbeatable, and I said for the four-year period, is because you can buy a insurance from Amazon with the product that basically covers it entirely. And what that insurance will do is one of two things. If it breaks, and I mean for any reason, even misuse, you can make a claim and they will either send you a brand new version, a brand new one, or they will give you the value that you paid for it within that four year period. So there is zero risk to this tool. The only question becomes, does it hold up? And here's the thing, I've been reading a lot of comments and these people that are trying it are somewhat skeptical, abusing it really hard, and this thing is holding up and it's kind of impressive to say the least. And this new ver variety, first of all, I really like the way it looks. It's a little bit lighter than the other variation. I actually kind of like the black coating on the pliers because it'll kind of prevent a little bit of rusting, which is good. Um, I think this is fantastic. Uh, like if we were doing a top five, like I, I was keeping five multi-tools forever, one of those would be my loaner category. This would be the tool. This would be the tool I would either gift or loan to anybody. That or maybe this one right here that has the bit kit. And this is a gateway to a wider range of multi-tools. And I think that if you can feel comfortable carrying this on your person or in your car, you start seeing a value to multi-tools like this, you will likely invest in something more premium down the line. For that four year period, you call it a trial period, you can use and abuse this and see what extent you can use a multi-tool on your daily life. I think these are a good thing in the market right now. They are completely legal, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, yes, they are completely legal because the patents have been expired. The Leatherman Surge has been out for more than two decades at this point, same with the Wave. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just, this is just amazing. I, I don't know what else to say. So that's Byberry, this is the tool. We're gonna be talking about this one more time in our value video on budget multi-tools. But this, this model right now, with the insurance program at its current price, as long as you're paying a total of $50 or less, including the insurance, this is a home run slam dunk price. It just has to stay at around that $40 so that you can get the $10 insurance program, keeping it total of under 50 for me to could say that this is a huge thumbs up. So that's sort of a statement to Byberry, who I know does watch this, make sure this thing doesn't go above 40. If it goes above 40, skip it. And if this goes above 30, skip it, okay? They're gonna come back down in price. They're gonna put promotions up. That's basically where they're at. But at those prices, there is almost nothing out there that beats it. Last one we're gonna talk about today is a new uh, kind of sub-brand with kind of the same style tool that you've seen from Byberry and all the others, right? So it's the same basic platform, same OEM, a little bit different. And I wanna say a big thank you to HVAC Budget for once again, introducing me to this. Very cool, I love his research capability. So check out his channel for sure. That He's just always finding these hidden gems. And I think, and I took it out and I played with it a little bit, I think this is quite a compelling package for the price point. I think it was like 35 or so. And that's, that's about as much as I ever wanna pay for this. I would not pay more than 40 total for sure but it had a couple of things in it that are a little bit different from multi-tools I've seen. So the big thing here is actually this kind of universal uh, socket thing. I can't remember what you call this thing, but I've seen these used. They tend to work for a period of time and then eventually they break. Okay, that's really the, the deal. The deal is they're great while they last and then when they break, they're, you know, they're just kind of, the thing. And it doesn't matter, you know, I've seen higher quality ones, they all kind of break after a certain amount of time. What's cool about this is that it comes with this uh, multi-tool. Now this is identical in tool set to the ones you've seen from both the Fleesa 
as well as the Byberry, you're gonna see that commonality, same OEM, little different design, and how smart were they here? And also kind of a little, eh, I don't know how I feel about it just yet, but this looks exactly like a scale of the Leatherman Free Series P2 and P4, which right now are currently out of stock on Leatherman's website very suspiciously. Uh, but this has the same tool set, same locking, bit driver, all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just another version of the same tool. Now, what's I think unfortunate is that this doesn't have a ball detent, so it doesn't actually stay in. If you want, you can get a small magnet, put it in the bottom. What you need is a six millimeter watt, like round magnet that is one millimeter in height, and that will actually fit perfectly in there. And it just, because it's, this is magnetic, it'll just sit in the bottom, you don't even have to glue it. And then uh, you will actually be able to retain this. My problem is you're most likely to do exactly this, right? Set it up like that and then try to crank on it. The likelihood that this piece of very thin metal shatters with a lot of torque is high. So I like that they include it, but it's the it's one of the most impractical things they could have done because if you were to do this with this bit driver, and it doesn't matter who makes it, okay? It's cast steel. The likelihood that that holds up is really low. And it's not even like them making it wrong. It's just physics, right? There's just too much torque on this thing and just too much force. I mean, I would be curious in actually testing this one multi-tool. I may do just this to see how much torque it takes to break this. I, I, I might be worth an adventure and I'm willing to sacrifice one multi-tool because I can kind of, you know, take the rest and actually do something with it. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced that this is a good idea. What I would do is if you're going to do this, make sure it's closed because if you can, uh, if whatever force you can apply with just your wrist is probably not gonna break it. But if you go to the L handled variety and you kind of multiply that force, I think you're gonna end up uh, shattering it. So just keeping that in mind, I think you're gonna be okay. I, I'm glad that it's included. And I think as a car kit, this is actually a pretty nice little addition, right? Like, okay, now we have something for nuts that's different than using our um, uh, needle nose pliers. What I would do is I would pair this with uh, something that can slot into this and gives you some extra torque without damaging that. So like a, a ratcheting driver of some sort, a ratcheting socket driver, quarter inch, would be a good option. I would just get something cheap, like $10, and I would go ahead and I would put it in here. I wonder, I, in fact, I think there's probably enough space in this to actually install it, put it into the, yeah, oh yeah, plenty of space in this sheath. So that's what I would do. I would put that in this sheath, that way, you uh, don't break that bit driver, which should probably only be used with these bits that are included. And that's, this is the second, only the second version of this type of tool that has a included set of bits other than the Biberry. So this kind of boosts it up in the order of which ones to choose, but I don't know anything about the brand. I don't think you're gonna have a, I don't know what your customer service experience is gonna be. So just keeping all that in mind. So $35 is perfectly legit. I just wouldn't spend more than, I don't know, 30, 38, I think call it, maybe 40 would be pushing it. Uh, just keeping that in mind. That, the, you know, every one of these things comes with a stipulation on price at certain amount. You just better off going with its competitor who sells the basically the same product. Hey, look, that's the nature of the game, right? You know, if it's too expensive, someone goes somewhere else. And I think that that's a good thing because these will stay reasonably priced. It's gonna be it for today. Five multi-tools, all of them pretty good value currently. And I wanna state that currently. Do not buy them at prices that uh, you're not comfortable with. You know, make sure that you're not spending more than 40 for the base model of the Surge clone or th around $30 for the Byberry Wave clone. And the same thing is true for these. This 35 is fine because it includes this, uh, but around 30 for the base price of the multi-tools. As long as you stick with that number, I think you're gonna be fine. 
And I'm glad to see that, that the Flash MT is available at a sub $50 price point. I will be including this as a budget multi-tool with that clear stipulation that you're gonna have to buy it on AliExpress. The same thing is kind of true for the um, uh, SOG PowerPoint, but you can get that for as low as like 30 bucks, which is amazing. So yeah, um, just keeping that in mind, these are the real thing. They are actually SOG multi-tools. They're just being sold on AliExpress. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time, and we will talk again soon.